Do you believe that God's people can ever go astray? If they can and do go astray, will that in any way affect their eternal salvation? I'm asking you if a child of God can fall from grace. Can we Christians so sin as to be eternally lost? The Apostle Peter paraphrased Isaiah 53 in verse 6 as follows, For we were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of our souls. 1 Peter 2 and verse 25. As you know from your reading of the scriptures, God's children are often referred to as sheep. The inference from this passage is that sheep can go astray. Jesus taught the same truth in his parable of the Good Shepherd in John 10 and also in other passages. But are we in danger of being lost if we do go astray? And why warn about going astray if there's no real danger in going astray? The word translated going astray means to wander away, to deceive, or to seduce. In James 5 verses 19 through 20, we find this word translated as err. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, do go astray from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Friends, both Isaiah and Peter were warning of the grave danger of wandering away from the truth of God's plan. They wanted men to return to God's way, not continue in their stubborn rebellion against God. Peter said, But you are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. The word returned means to turn again. The Greek here is translated be converted, also in Acts 3 and verse 19, but should be translated as turn. But how could they turn or return if they had never gone astray or if going astray had no repercussions? Well, Paul addresses that question in Galatians 6 and verse 1, where he says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. The Apostle Peter speaks of men's turning or returning to the shepherd and bishop of our souls, 1 Peter 2 and verse 25. And as you know from studying the scriptures, both the Old Testament and the New Testament present the idea of a leader being a shepherd. This is something that is very prominent in the Bible. And one of the best known passages in the Bible begins with the words, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, Psalm 23, verses 1 and 2. In the New Testament, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, John 10 and verse 11. Incidentally, elders in the Lord's church today are shepherds as well. The King James Version in 1 Peter 5 and verse 2 says, Feed the flock of God which is among you. The Greek verb that is found here, though, should be rendered shepherd or tend the flock. Jesus is the shepherd, and he is also the bishop of our souls. The word bishop comes from a Greek word that is also rendered as overseer or superintendent. The literal meaning of the Greek is to watch over, to oversee. In James 1 and verse 27 it says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. This word, visit, is this same word meaning to watch over, to oversee. And friends, if you have not turned your life over to Jesus Christ, the shepherd and bishop of your soul, then please think seriously about doing that today. Jesus asks you to believe that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He requires you to repent of your sins and to confess his name before men. And he commands you to obey the gospel in baptism. He who believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He who believeth not shall be condemned. Mark 16 and verse 16. And after your initial obedience to the gospel, 
You are to give your life into his keeping. And when you do that, you are not going to fall, and so an entrance shall be ministered unto you into an everlasting kingdom. Second Peter 1, verses 10 and 11. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today. We pray that you have a wonderful day today and a blessed weekend ahead.